Hi everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Zoom with New Age Leaders. This is a series of interviews with young leaders who are presently shaping our future. With each episode, we'll be discussing different aspects of leadership, management and society while focusing on one industry at a time. I'm your host Abhinav Daherwal, an MBA graduate from IIM Bangalore and currently I'm a fashion retailer by passion i'm a storyteller through my blogs my toastmaster speeches and youtube creations like this coming to today's theme in india women empowerment is a classic issue despite the mandatory requirement of having at least one woman director on the board as per the companies act 2013 in india currently women hold only 7.7% of the board seats and just 2.7% of board chair these figures are one of the worst in the world and today we're going to discuss the topic women leadership in corporate india with our guest utkalika mohanty she is an iim bangalore alumni who in the past has worked with indian conglomerate like ck birla in a leadership role driving multiple high impact and high growth initiatives she is currently working as an assistant vice president in a high tech operation for genpack india so let's get on with the interview first question we have seen this decreasing proportion of women as we climb up the ladder as per the financial express report we have 42% of new graduates as women but only 24% of them make it to end level professionals further only 19% of them make it to the senior level management roles where do you see is the problem so okay, i'm on the spot with a very difficult question which the world is trying to solve but then i will put my perspective in terms of what do i think about this particular question and please keep you know take it with a pinch of salt also where you don't like my answers but somehow i feel that this imbalance is not new for years women have lacked representation at the highest levels if you go to the history women have been anonymous throughout like you would hardly see any um, anywhere they have been mentioned also so uh, but then ha- i personally feel that leadership is a very gender agnostic topic you need to have those traits or display those certain traits to be a leader making it as a gender comparison takes away the es- so the primary essence of it uh, so the primary essence of leadership having those traits goes mm-hmm. away with when you categorize that why women leaders should be there but having said that uh, it becomes very difficult to digest the fact that you can't find enough capable women to grow to the next level as leaders that's something which i would try and answer okay. uh, take it from both the side and from the supply side and as well as from the demand side and i'll start with the demand side okay i'll start from the women side because that's the first one to tackle um, mm-hmm. so as you move up the ladder and as you move in the timeline many things change in your life and it is not i'm not saying it doesn't change for the men it changes for them also but uh, you know with time uh, those changes come into your life and these are your personal cho- choices you get married you have kids you have aged parents to take care of or in laws to take care of these things come and come as additional responsibility to you as before when you actually enter the career path and you start with your job and what happens over the period of time at least at this point of time also it still stage the primary responsibility of a woman uh, to take care of the kitchen to take care of the kids to take care of any ailing parents or sick parents or probably who are old enough who can't take care of not that i'm saying that men don't take care of they do but that never has been a primary responsibility till now and when you have so many primary responsibilities at home to take care of even if you want or you don't want at times your career takes a back seat or a secondary seat because it is humanly not possible to actually justify all the primary responsibilities at one go and that's mm-hmm. a demand side problem which basically you somehow you compromise on your career rather than people compromising on your career path and you eventually choose how to take a balance and probably take a more balanced view towards life than only career and probably that they there most of the women struggle that's the demand side of it from a supply side of it when you look at the employers what happens is as you grow up the promotion criteria has become very opaque in nature you would see that subjectivity comes into picture more often than how you are evaluated on the basis of 
things what you deliver a lot of time the biases or the perceptions come into picture as you grow up in your leadership uh, cadre versus what you actually deliver on ground and to be very honest these are little more biased towards women than men the reason mm-hmm. that there are a lot of preconceived notions which are aligned to that if you go by your uh, harvard research which has done immense amount of research on it they have basically concluded that uh, you get rated on the basis of your perception what your colleagues carry around you versus what you actually have delivered and these perceptions can be around like you being very emotional you being very aggressive you being you are probably prioritizing your home more while in reality you might not have been displaying those behavior also but people come up with this preconceived notion for which the thin line of judging between somebody who can be a leader who cannot be a leader gets decided on those factors and from a supply side that is something which i predominantly see or observe around me in terms of how actually you get judged over the period of time that's what my take is on from both sides and i feel if you really look at how you handle both the situation that would decide how you grow in the career yeah that's pretty much what i feel uh, like there are so many like so less people in the leadership cater i think that was a very good uh, start and to understand this issue we got to know both the supply side as well as the demand side of the problem more or less we have a familiar with the demand side like we had uh, a society which is a patriarchal society and women being primary responsible uh, for held responsible for the family commitments and like you said but uh, focusing more on the supply side what we have uh, picked up that uh, the perception which you said is uh, i'm not sure if all every one of us will agree to that but have you ever experienced any of these issues and if you have how do you feel how do you manage and what was the learning out of it so i feel that society in general has been very very judgmental about a women than a normal human being and they pass these judgments very often without even delving deep in terms of how it exactly happens and i'll give you a few examples uh people who are very career oriented they have put in the primary objective for them as career mm. society term them as these are career oriented women probably don't even take care of families also a lot of judgments which comes with that people who choose to stay back home and take care of family itself is a huge amount of work people call them housewives okay if you are while trying to balance somewhere where most of the people try and do it actually try to balance a family try to balance you know career mm-hmm. people call it mediocre say that good enough you're just trying you're just there you are not good enough because anyways your priority is not clear and you're still like trying to balance so many things which is probably practically not possible and sometimes close ones or families also don't understand in terms of what the aspirations are for them to support you i am glad that i am born in this era i am not born in like my grandma's era where probably never understood anything also i'm thankful that now at least people understand but still there is lot of difference in terms of how you think about those points and i'll i'll call out those my mom or probably mom who were working moms before they used to work because they had to support the family financially or they had to do this extra work so that you know their family can be born up well and like they can do those things but when you see these uh, for uh, you know forward looking women at this particular age it is no more to support the family while it plays a part now people want to choose this as a career option saying that this is my career which i want to build probably there is a disconnect in terms of the previous age and this age in that particular piece for which you lot of time you don't get support also and then you come back to work and obviously you manage work along with your home mm. and a lot of lot of women whom i have met few of them are very clear they know exactly what they want while there are regrets a lot of people have regrets so it's okay with that and i find that that's absolutely all right because you have chosen what you want but i fall into the second category who is little confused and probably in the major category bucket where women little ashamed and guilty for not meeting those societal expectation like if you are ashamed and guilty of not meeting all the responsibilities you still have to figure out a way to do it but you know when you are trying to manage all of those things and like you are in a sales job and how those perceptions 
well. If somebody is pitching really hard and like probably comes across very aggressive, you never call a man saying that he is angry or he couldn't control his emotions or mm-hmm. very aggressive to which customer felt that okay, probably it was very aggressive approach. But mm-hmm. if you see some female probably pitching really, really hard, trying to make people understand, they come across aggressive. You get this feedback that you have been very, very aggressive in the meeting. Sometimes when you express your emotions and he, women by default have those um, emotional attribute in the holistic family also, like in a ha- life also. That's how women are made of. But if you bring in like you probably um, smile a lot, probably, um, you know, you were sad, you cried. But people treat this and align yourself saying that you probably were very emotional and hence those reactions are. No, probably that's not the fact. Those behaviors are can be one or two which you could have displayed, but that's not what defines your leadership traits. When you get stereotyped saying that these are things which you should not display, the problem comes from there. And these are the traits which I spoke about probably makes a lot of sense when you go up the ladder versus when entering into the career. Because entering into the career, you're only focusing on what you're doing, what you're delivering. When you grow up, you are responsible for a lot of people whom you manage. And if there is a strong stereotype or perception which comes in, at times it becomes difficult to actually break those also. And in my circle, people whom I have heard, it becomes difficult at times to actually go back and tell the person that, you know what, this is not what you think. I come up with some potential which probably were not seeing. But that's that's kind of I have seen people struggling with. And it takes a little bit of more effort and time to justify what your behaviors are versus probably your male counterpart. One of the issues which makes news often is the pay parity. For example, uh, one man and one woman, they're both sales associates, both doing equally well. So this is as per the Ministry of Statistics and Project Implementation. As of 2019, a woman graduate earns 690 rupees per day which is 24% lower than a male counterpart who is earning 902 rupees per day in an urban India. So my question to you is, understood the perception is different and the society and the organization has a differential uh, way of looking at people. But if for the same job, why do we have this pay parity? And uh, what are the possible solutions for this? I mean, in MBA, I have learned this, how to project data in terms of what messages you want people to carry with. Mm-hmm. And probably um, this data point also needs a little bit of clarification and context to it. So until recently, uh, the primary waste difference, which probably the world complained about uh, till like probably last 20 years also, uh, mm-hmm. is about pay was dependent on the education attainment. And hence I said, I am probably more thankful for this era that um, I'm not born in my uh, grandma's era where probably education was also not a choice for a woman. Now it is. Now there are higher education where people are of equal capability. So post that, I feel that there has been some changes in terms of how the pay has been. If both male and female are equal coming from an educational background and getting selected. Call about our campus recruitment, call about like entering to any of the companies. I think it really still remains the same. I don't see a lot of challenges there if you have the same education level. Now there is a second aspect of it in terms of the occupation, what you choose. Predominantly, if you have seen from like the beginning till now, but predominantly women were in teaching field, service field, hospitality field. There is a choice of occupation which comes into picture. An engineer gets paid more than a teacher. And that's the truth. So if you get average in that fashion, you would see that majority of the women would be working in the service field. People, like probably when you do an average of that, your pay would be probably um, an average of engineers and doctors maybe. While I'm saying that now the number has increased drastically. So if you, if you take out these two points, come up to three. Two people, a male and female, enter into the same system and you take that as the entry point, the pay is same. But still mm-hmm. there's something which happens which still cannot be addressed. You get into this particular period where you go on maternity leave, you come back, your wage doesn't remain same. Or I don't know what time that is for women, but there's a very strong 
uh, study and if you go actually into the facts and figures also women actually lose out on probably some 7 to 8% after they come back from maternity leave while the data needs to be verified further but there enough of research what has been done that you actually take a pay cut and i would not only blame the company for it a uh, lot of time women themselves are very underconfident at saying that do i have a negotiation power again to go back and negotiate further also they they accept the pay whatever they get when they come back to work and probably that's when they go into the same package and start at the same pace mm-hmm. five ten years you pay this penalty and while well male actually get a paternity premium you actually pay a maternity penalty for that and that's that's roughly around 70 10% that's that's the time when you actually the wage gap increases and then it stays further because then you progress further you come back slower than what you expected to do probably and that this increases till now we have discussed the women leadership in general what about your industry the tech industry uh, having said whatever uh, we have discussed till now do you feel the tech industry is more conducive to women and uh, why is that so i come mm-hmm. from manufacturing industry for my first 5 years and now yeah. i like after 5 years so uh, if i had to compare apple to apple yes definitely this industry is much better and conducive in terms of a manufacturing industry going to specifics at a hiring level yes if i had to give my personal experience when i landed there i probably saw like single digit women on the floor when i landed here i saw like probably close to like it's a good number like at least 30 40% people would have been there on the floor and it gives you that good feeling that okay you could see many so at mm-hmm. least a better chance versus any other company where you can't even see many you don't know what the future is but <coughs> conducive in terms of here the job is primarily desk job right you work on a computer when you get mm-hmm. in manufacturing there are a lot of uh, reservation against the job categories also uh, till now all the jobs are not open for women and probably if i take a logical stand i'm not very sure if all the women can do those jobs also to be very honest okay. and from an infra point of view the industry is still not ready and i can talk about the basic necessity also you you go sell those um, products like pipes cements and all those things you go to those market heavily male dominated so the basic sanitization hygiene in terms of a like a managed toilet also is difficult to find and call it a difficult plant location or a market space and if you think basically is the environment you say not very sure about it but companies are definitely pushing for that but then the infra is not at that level where you can actually have a lot of female employees to work um, easily in like with regards to any of the male counterpart whom you have in the company so if from that comparison this is little better but when you go to again the same question the first question you asked me what are the percentage of ceos or what centers who are in the top leadership still the number is very skewed i mean this the industry still hasn't figured out the answers to it and hence i said at a hiring level or entry level you would see that lot of women here and as i said it's a computer job and hence there is no reservation for any of the job role also you can do all of the roles hence probably the work environment is more conducive that makes complete sense i hope uh, this continues and we get lot more tech industry in india so that it's uh, attracting a lot of women another thing which crossed my mind while i was preparing for this interview is the differential effect of covid on women leadership do you think there is any gender specific pattern which is emerging is there a differential effect going on i mean I... what is your take on that okay Uh, this pandemic uh, it's going to affect everybody to be honest but if there is a pattern towards women i probably uh, think from history also and i'll um, connect one of the point which i mentioned before that mm-hmm. female are dominated female mm-hmm. are dominated in service sectors like food hospitality tourism and all of those sectors right and mm-hmm. it's expected to have the harshest economy effect as of this pandemic okay um, to go back to the aftermath of 2008 global financial crisis post the crisis also the support measures actually were provided to large infrastructure which is probably more male dominated versus the support what was provided to a teaching or a nursing or a public services where the female were dominated if we continue to do the same 
and probably will continue to have the same result also. Then also we had a lot of um, uh, like job cuts in terms of women specifically. We can expect the same here also. So this is one of the um, points where the choices what you have made in terms of industry. Second point is in terms of uh, when women actually work, I'm not talking about the formal job structure, which probably I have or probably few lucky people have. A lot of women tend to work without clear terms and conditions for the employment in terms of uh, their health insurance, paid sick leave, um, maternity leave, pensions, unemployment benefits, whatever it is. They probably go because, because again there is one more fact which gets correlated a lot of women do temporary jobs they don't do even a permanent jobs also because they have to go on and off for so many things hence they don't have clarity in terms of what are those benefits also so the moment the job cut happens at least the industry has a tendency that you first lay off the temporary workers versus the permanent workers and then you go line by line basically so if you see want to actually analyze the pattern it might just start with them also and we are again re-clarifying the fact that you don't have people at the top. You have a lot of people in the bottom of the pyramid and probably few in the middle also. And when you actually see the layoffs, it will start from the bottom, right? Uh, you might see that company firing a lot of capable people at one day. Uh, they would say that whoever is mediocre probably take them out. So if you actually correlate all the data points, it mm -hmm. might be bad uh, in terms of women who are in that industry. There's a lot to see in terms of what kind of support you are getting. Uh, but at the time, I feel that pandemic has also taught, uh, at least as Insta, I can see that there's so many male who are cooking, posting pictures, so many mm -hmm. who are doing household work. So I'm just hoping that when you out of pandemic, probably you would see a more balanced approach towards life in terms of how you manage domestic part of it. I think that will eventually result in terms of how well you can manage the um, professional part of it also. So, yeah, I think they can be good and bad both as a result of the pandemic. I hope I'm wrong and I hope you are right and we emerge as a better <laughs> after this COVID that has definitely been one of the things I'm looking forward to. Thank you, Kalika. That was actually a very, very insightful discussion that you guys just had. Uh, I have one question. Um, um, that is more intrinsic than related to what the macro macro perception of uh, women leadership is. Um, I believe that people, uh, especially people like you, who've got this opportunity to really advance onto the leadership roles and uh, you know have had the support of family, or maybe I would say I know that you know support is something which is really fought and earned also. So uh, you know this who have earned this support, uh, I believe this fight is not against men, but it is against a time when for women like you did not get this opportunity. So do you sometimes feel extremely overwhelmed by uh, your good fortune or by your own, uh, you know, the efforts that you have put to reach this particular place? And do you feel jostled enough to justify this opportunity to your own self? I feel that that kind of creates a creates tremendous pressure more than any sort of societal expectations that I have to justify this opportunity for my own self. To be very honest, I... I think it's not now. I always felt like a lot of pressure on me. Probably these are self-created also. Mm -hmm. And when you said that this fight is not against the, the man who is there in the office or the house, mm -hmm. this fight is more towards you getting the thing what you deserve, not mm -hmm. against somebody. It is more to do with what is your potential and are you getting recognized for what your potential is. And to answer your question in terms of how pressurized the situation is, a lot of people have this clarity in terms of saying that, you know, this is what needs to be prioritized. And then mm -hmm. they go for it. Saying that um, financial goal-wise, I want to achieve this and hence I go for it, right? For me, when I assess myself, I have a very holistic view towards life and probably a lot of women also have in terms of what all they want to achieve uh, from life. And they have this tendency to look for meaning and purpose of their work, how they are evolving as an individual and all of it. Probably that's true for me also. So the place where I am, I try to justify almost like on a daily basis if I'm adding value or I'm not adding value. If I'm right fit for the role, if I'm not right fit for the role. Because you get scrutinized so much by a lot of people that you tend to ask those questions to yourself at the end of the day saying that, are you doing enough to 
justify the fact that where you are and probably are you doing enough to go to the next step i am very fortunate that i have got lot of people who think that i should do more like i should grow more and you know do much more than what is expected because we we as a group also still are discussing women leadership right that means still there are not enough women leaders world yeah. expects to and if i personally want to be there it's going to be like a hell of a journey i'm i'm not expecting it to be any smooth and i'm also not denying the fact that it doesn't create pressure it creates like tremendous pressure to actually justify on a minute to minute basis in terms of what you're doing so the point that you kind of bring out is that um, when you're in that position you are your harshest critic it's not society it's not office it's just you who's putting the expectations upon your own self and you're trying to really satisfy your own expectations so i think um, i mean of your female viewers would probably definitely want to understand that <laughs> it's not an easy journey being a female leader <laughs> but well done well done utkal okay so something happened in uh, one of those scenarios where actually a uh, senior women within a uh, Uh, our team said that i don't want girls in my team but when you see yourself let's say you know 5 7 years down the line and you are in that kind of a position where you can take those these kind of decisions uh, what message do you do uh, give uh, uh, those uh, uh, young rising women uh to not be in that kind of a position or where, where do you think you would be uh, where you would not say something like this or in that position that's a valid observation man actually uh, and i would not deny that fact in fact there is a terminology for that also recently i read about it they are called queen bees who are those successful women uh, they are called queen bees for a reason that they probably are not like promoting enough people or promoting or not giving them the opportunity as you rightly mentioned and there is no denial of that fact and hence i started uh, my discussion um, in the first point itself that somehow from the childhood itself i kind of didn't like reservations i when i look at future i would like to see myself as a leader than a women leader to be very honest i somehow feel that i'm capable enough forget about male female or anybody to be a leader and i want to be known by that i don't want qualifier against my name by qualifying that somebody is a women leader because i don't hear anybody as a male leader right so just if and if the example what you have given of a person is primarily not 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 even a leader if i have to consider somebody as that person i definitely don't see her as a leader because she she lacks in the basic leadership qualities and inclusive your team should be how you should get people of lot of experiences and different background versus actually categorize saying that i need only these set of people that itself restricts your team's performance which probably she doesn't even know but then having said that when i look at my future i probably want somebody to call me out and tell me that utkalika you have done well and probably your capability is higher or you you have potential and probably you have those traits for which you are known as but people should know me as an individual versus a woman actually and that's what i want to probably leave this message with everybody else also establish this fact what how people would know who versus how important your gender plays in your entire journey and while still the the point is debatable whether the and i initiative should be there or not there should be uh, women need conclave should be there or not these are debatable point but somehow to me as a person i feel that i should be known as an individual versus a women leader and that's what i aspire to be hence wherever this women thing comes in saying that okay uh, you got selected for women leadership conflict i feel like okay can, can i ever get selected for a leadership conclave where i would represent and i will feel happy with that to be very honest no well said i think uh, i couldn't have done it better and we got a hashtag we are not our genders <laughs> good thing and we also come to know what this term has been be okay so to conclude today we covered a wide range of issues regarding uh, leadership i will tell not women leadership but leadership in general and in corporate india and uh, uh, we spoke about a few of the important issues like uh, proportion of women going down as we go up the ladder the pay parity the possible reasons why this is the case both from the demand and the supply side 
and we also uh, looked into some of the differential effects of covid on women and i hope uh, all of this would definitely help us to become more mature and more cognizant of the better health of the society with that i want to thank the guest for today and also the audience uh, we had wonderful hena joining us and uh, nimit joining us as well so thank you all and um, until next time bye bye